Hey, welcome back, everybody. In the previous two videos, we looked at the OS module, and in this video, we're continuing the theme of interacting with the underlying operating system. And in this particular video, I'm going to show you the subprocess module. So what is that? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So for this first example of subprocess, I'm going to actually show you how to determine if a process is running on your underlying OS. And I'm going to basically have the program interact differently depending on the results. Now, this video is going to be heavily Linux focused here. So this may or may not work for you on your end, and that's okay. I just wanted to show you that this type of thing is possible. So try to follow along if you can. But this example will show you whether or not a process is running on your Linux system. So first of all, I need to import subprocess so that we can use it. And now I need a service to check, and I want to store it in a variable. So I'll just keep it simple and, and call it SVC. I'll set it equal to SSHD. I know that process is running on my machine, and you can use whatever service you want. It doesn't actually matter, but we're going to go ahead and use SSHD in my example. So now what I want to do is create a service check. I'm going to create a variable called service check. And I'm going to set it equal to subprocess.call. And we need parentheses for subprocess.call. And we actually need to create a list. So I'm going to explain that in a minute. So bear with me. Let me go ahead and write that out. So basically, what I have here is a list. And there's three items in this list PS, which is a Linux command for process and then dash C, which is an option for the PS command. That's an uppercase C. And then I'm using the variable SVC, which I just created up here on this line. So now what I want to do is write an if statement to check whether or not this process is actually running. So I'm going to go ahead and write this if service check equal equal zero I'm going to print the service is running. Else, this is if it's not running, the service is not running. So I'll explain this in a bit more detail, but let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. And we see some output here from the ps command. It gives us our process ID, some information here. And of course, we see sshd. And then it is telling me the service is running. Now, in my case, I have the OpenSSH package installed, which on this Ubuntu system was simply a matter of sudo apt install OpenSSH server, which installs that daemon or service. And Ubuntu automatically starts that when you install it, so you don't actually have to start the process. But if you're using something other than Debian or Ubuntu, you might have to manually start it. Now, the OpenSSH server is not something you should have installed in your system, or at least not something you should have running unless you actually need it. So if you did install this and it wasn't installed before, and you're going through the example, you might want to change install to remove later to get rid of it if it's not something that you're actually using. But in my case, the service is running. So to stop it on Ubuntu, I could do sudo systemctl stop, and I'll do sshd. I'll press enter, put in my super secret password. And if I do a systemctl status instead of stop, we can see that it is inactive, so the service is not running. If I was to run the script again, it's telling me the service is not running. So I'm going to go ahead and start the service. And run the script again, and we see the output that the service is running. So already, you're probably seeing the benefit of subprocess. With the OS module, we were also able to interact with our system. But with subprocess, it's specializing on actually running commands. 
we were able to run commands with the OS module, but subprocess is sometimes a better fit for that. As you can see here, we were able to check to see if a service was running. So just to go over it again real quick, I created a variable here, a string called SVC set to SSHD. That could be the name of any service, and that's just simply a string. It doesn't really matter what you type there as long as it's actually a service on your system. And I have here service underscore check, which is being created as an instance of subprocess.call. So basically what we have here is a list. We know that because we see the square brackets. Now, what we can't do is actually write out the command. So for example, if I was to do that, the program would crash. I'm gonna go ahead and just show you that right now. And we get a trace back. Why did we get a trace back? Well, to make it short and simple, each individual item in a command needs to be its own string. And that means at any time in a command where you would press space, that those two items actually would need to be in parentheses right here. So for example, if I was to just run the command, we can see that that's simply a Linux command that I can execute on the shell itself. It's just basically running the ps command and it's just going to print SSHD because I'm limiting the output to SSHD. Now, one thing to note here is the exit code. So if I do echo, and this is a Linux thing, not a Python thing, dollar sign, question mark, actually it's technically a bash thing, we see that there's an exit code. We get an exit code of zero. So what happens if I change this to something that doesn't exist or a process I know is not running? We get no output here other than the headings PID TTY, but if I do the echo and I get the exit code here, it's an exit code of one. Now that's important because that's basically how we run this program right here. So again, we have a list right here containing the actual command. And now we're checking if service check is equal to zero. What's happening here is that service check is actually being made equal to the exit code. So if the exit code is zero, success, the service is running. But if the exit code is anything else, which in our case would be a one, if the service is not running, then it's gonna print the service is not running. So basically you can see that that's actually utilizing the exit code and the exit code of the subprocess.call when it runs the command is being stored right here in service check. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this program and add an additional feature to it, and I will be right back. All right, so I went ahead and added an additional feature to our script to make it more useful. And what I did specifically was I edited the else statement in the bottom section, and it was already printing the service is not running, but I wanted to start the process if it's not running to make it more useful. So now it's gonna print starting it, and then it's gonna to execute two subprocess.call statements. And the first one is going to be systemctl start sshd. Now this command right here is actually distribution specific. Not every distribution is using systemctl, which means that it's using systemd. Most distributions nowadays do use this but you may have to adjust this for your distribution. So if it doesn't work, don't worry about it. I'm on Ubuntu, so it should work if you're also on Ubuntu, but if not, you could see the output that I'm about to show you, which will show you that it does actually work. And you can adjust the command and play with it at your leisure. So basically what this line is doing is it's gonna to attempt to start that process. On the bottom line here, it's just basically going to execute the same command it's executing up here, ps-c and then the service. So I'll go ahead and save the file and let's see if it works. I'm gonna go ahead and run it now. And the service is running. So if I do systemctl status sshd, it's telling the truth. It's active and running. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stop the process and I need to put in my credentials here. And let's go ahead and check the status again. We can see that it's inactive. Let's see how our script behaves now that I've stopped the process. 
And right now it's kind of faded, but it's telling me the service is not running, starting it. And it's prompting me for my password, which I'll put in. And it went ahead and started it for us. Running the status, we see the script did work. And because I didn't actually use sudo in my command right here, we, you know, basically it needed to ask for my permission and have me type the password to confirm that you know, I have authorization to be able to start that process. But it did actually work with the underlying operating system. And we created this script to basically check if the service is running and start it if it's not. And this is actually useful to us because we could actually run this script as root or maybe have it on a cron job, for example, on the system. And I go over cron jobs in other videos on my channel. But the takeaway is that this script could be running as a privileged user periodically to check if a process is not running, and then it will attempt to start it if it's not, which could be useful in the case that you have a process that needs to always be running on your server. Now you have the tools in your tool set to create a program to do exactly that. However, I've mentioned in previous videos, never repeat yourself. And look here, I have the ps command here on this line. And I also have it again here at the bottom. So I really shouldn't do that. I should never repeat myself and I should only write statements just one time. Thankfully though, it's very easy for us to fix this. So I'll go ahead and make some changes. Okay, so I went ahead and made some adjustments to this script. The first thing I did was I created a list called check underscore CMD. I created this list a bit differently than I've created them in previous videos. And you can see here that I basically put each item on its own line and I have them aligned right here. So you don't have to do this, but you'll see this commonly when creating a list that to be a little bit more organized, that some people will create lists on individual lines or at least each item on its own line right here. So it's up to you if you want to do that, but this is essentially the same as creating any list like we would normally do. And here we're basically creating the service check, which again, if you remember, will be set to the eventual status code or exit code. And what I did here is I inputted the check command. Now, you remember before we had brackets around our command because it needed to be a list. We don't need the brackets anymore because the brackets are right here. So we don't actually need to include them in the service or subprocess call. We just simply insert the list I created right here. We insert it there. Moving forward, here at the very bottom, I have the check command there as well. And I went ahead and added it to this line right here. So basically anywhere I was calling that PS command, I've replaced it to check command. So the beauty of that is if I ever need to change the check command, I simply change it right here when I declare the list. And when I change it that one time, it'll be changed for every occurrence in the entire program, which is more efficient. I'll go ahead and save the file and let's see if it works the same way. All right, the service is running, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. Run the script again, and we can see that it's already realizing that the process isn't running and giving me a prompt for my password. And there we go, now it's running. Now, as you can see, we were able to interact with the system and we were able to write a script that's semi-useful. I know in this series that for the most part, I've been going over the basics and making sure you understand the foundational concepts. And at the beginning, I mentioned that the theme is gonna be system administration. So we're finally at the point now where we can actually write scripts that are following that theme and allowing us to make changes on the actual operating system. So we finally made it. And at this point in the series, the uh, tutorials are going to get a little bit more advanced, uh, but that's to be expected. I think you guys are ready for this. As long as you've been following along so far, you'll be able to write awesome scripts. And as you can see, we wrote a script to check a process and go ahead and start that process if it's not running. So we've already seen the OS module in previous videos. We can get information from our system from the OS module. With subprocess, we can actually run commands on the underlying operating system. So. Definitely, um, you should be able to create some useful scripts. So what I would recommend you do right now, go ahead and play around with this. Make sure you do so on a test system, just in case you don't you know, wanna mess with the production system or anything like that. 
and just, you know, a virtual machine is fine, and see what kinds of changes you can actually make to your system. And then I'll see you in the next video as soon as I have that uploaded. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. And if you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the show notes below this video, where I have a link to my Patreon page, as well as an Amazon store, where I have a listing of hardware that I've personally tested myself to be compatible with Linux. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And I look forward to making more videos for you guys very soon. Thanks again.